Welcome back, Guardians. This is Psalm Lab here. Just wanted to hopefully share some encouragement with you because that's what we do here on this channel. We encourage one another, but it's also important to acknowledge where people are at. And so I want to take this opportunity to just thank those of you who are developers on different games and those of you who are developers or were developers on Destiny, I know that the last 78 hours have been really honestly stressful, disappointing, would probably cause a lot of you to feel a lot bitter, maybe some of you just felt like you wanted to move on super quick, I would completely understand and also relate to that. But this video is really to just honor the creativity of incredibly talented people. So I want to talk about the layoffs. The layoffs are probably the worst thing that could ever happen. And as somebody who has worked professionally and also as a freelancer, there's nothing worse than losing work or losing a job or losing your job. Um, and I have done nothing but continue to pray for you all and also um, share on Twitter job openings that are available. I really hope that whatever company picks you guys up honors you and values what you have to bring on board and doesn't just do things the same way we've always done them within the games industry. And hopefully by saying that the way that I've said it, many of you will understand what I mean by that, even without going into too much detail. But I think it's paramount that even within the universe of Destiny, we're always battling with going to the brink. We're either dealing with a collapse or we're dealing with an enemy who thinks that they can come in and take over the world. And in this case, I'm not even saying that Sony is a bad guy. I'm not saying that anybody within the leadership of Bungie is a bad guy. But whatever the case may be, decisions were made and things didn't line up and a lot of people are now out of work and so I hope that I will be able to continue to help to retweet anybody who I see is looking for work. I did put out a tweet yesterday about job availability, I know I just mentioned that but I thought it was important to mention it again. And just to let you know that I really value you as individuals and the input and the impact that you had on Destiny as a whole. Because look, Destiny isn't just about the game, but it's also about the story and what Destiny and Bungie as a company stood for ultimately is hope. Hope that we can have a better tomorrow and that on that horizon when we look up that there is, a, there is light at the end of the tunnel, that there is light in the midst of the darkness, and that's really what the Psalm Lab channel stands for. So it did it it's it was a no-brainer to want to cover Destiny and want to do things with the company and want to collaborate with incredible individuals. And I have had the opportunity to get to know some of the Bungie devs, not super intimately or close but you know enough conversation and I value them and they value me and I like to think that we've become good friends over the short years that I've I've been within the Destiny community and I know that many other content creators echo this same feeling I was talking to Bife the other night and <laughs> we we just resonated on so many aspects of this entire debacle and I, I won't go too much into like the corporate logistical aspect but I will touch on it because I think it's important to talk about this stuff and call it out as it is but I also want to focus on the good times and just mention a couple of the people who I had the fortunate experience to interact with. I was fortunate to be invited to a bungee summit last year and it was the most incredible experience that I ever had the opportunity to be part of and I don't know if a lot of the individuals who were in that room either either without spilling any beans at all because I don't want to break NDA because I'm still 
I signed a contract, that, that would be really bad. But the individuals who were involved in that process had a huge impact on me personally and were honestly some of the nicest and most talented people that you could ever meet. We always hear a ton of people talk about how their experience with Bungie has been a good one, majority of people uh, who are predominantly more positive and don't just give in to na negative narratives. So that, that's not what we do here and I'm not going to go into detail about those people because we already know who those people are. But they genuinely, there is a collective mass of people within the Bungie who are some of the most positive, kindest, most helpful people you will ever get the opportunity to interact with or talk to, who had a phenomenal impact within the company and the culture that had been developed. And if you get five minutes with these people, you will be absolutely amazed. Some of them had already left uh, last year, maybe the year before that. But again, really great, really insightful, very creative people. And I know, yes, that within a corporate business structure, when it's a professional thing, everybody has to appear to be nice. And yes, whilst that may be true, I would still go as far to say that some of these individuals are still incredible people. And that deserves to be honored. So hopefully this, this video honors you and I just want you to know that I appreciate you. The game industry structure, I wanna keep this as short as possible, has for the longest time and as far back as I can remember has always been a corporate beast. And corporate beasts have a way that they were created to run. We cannot pretend that the people at the top at least a majority of the people at the top are in it financially. That is their focus, that is their goal. They are not emotionally invested as we are as players, content creators, and even developers. And we all know this, and that's why, um, that's why I don't wanna go on and, and, and repeat about that too much. But what I will say is that Something eventually will have to change, and I'm hopeful that it will change because there are there are great studios and there is better leadership. But I think until we continue to see more accessibility in games, more diversity in games, we're never really going to get a good glimpse at what is possible. Games development on a whole is at the cutting edge of technology and it's either you scale up or you scale out. That's literally how the structure works. And it's only now, post-COVID, are companies beginning to look at the importance of mental health and physical health and how those two things combined, when dealt with well, when proper policies are put in place, when good support structure and financial leadership, stewardship, and investment in employees is, is done, then you can potentially become world-renowned and award-winning because you've invested in your engine. And your engine is your people. And it doesn't take much to care about people. And one of the biggest aspects and challenges that we have as individuals and as people in, the, in our society, particularly within the games industry, is caring about people. The more we care less, I think, the bigger the impact we're going to see where decisions like this are made to say, I don't necessarily know if there's a way for what's happened to be fixed. Well, actually I do. The, the way to fix would be to hire all of those people back. If, if that was me, that's what I would do. I want to remind us too though, as the Destiny community, that we have weathered probably even worse than this. If we were able to weather the Bungie Activision acquisition, if we were able to weather Season of the Worthy, which arguably was also one of the longest seasons of content drought we ever been through. I'm not even talking like, granted, sunsetting hadn't happened yet, so there was a lot of things to do in the game still, but I remember the absolute unrest that everybody had when the idea of the next expansion being delayed was a thing you know, or the next season being delayed was a thing. If they are delaying the final shape, D3 
Destiny as a game will go on and it's important for us as players to continue to have a positive impact on the industry. I think the minute we all give in to this narrative that is just the literally the ground is going to open up and swallow us all into this DCV. I also want to caveat that, look, I'm not taking away from the frustration that everybody has right now. What what Astacross has said, what Bife has said, what Mylan has said, what Sammy Cat has said, what everybody has said, the list can go on. Um, but I think it's important that we talk about the incredible people who worked at Bungie and what they did bring on board. Liana Rupert is, is a good friend. I love her to bits and I've told her that more than once, but she did phenomenal work at Bungie. What she had to deal with. Destiny is a hard community to, to navigate. Um, there's no beating around the bush. So, and there's other people who like her have worked really hard and continue to work really hard. Sam Bartley, who was also a community manager, did incredible work. Uh, Griffin Bennett, on socials did incredible work. He's been with Bungie for years. Um, Jason, Jason Guisao, um, hopefully I pronounced your name right. Amazing work. True Blue, John Zellman, a good buddy that <laughs> I had the privilege of interacting with within the Destiny community and was like integral to the birthing process for the old Chicago project, which is still gonna go on. That's still gonna be a project that happens. If I had a company, I would hire you all. And I was literally saying that to my dad the other day. I was like, Dad, I should I should start my my game studio and just hire the whole world <laughs> and change the world for the good. Um, but I know that it, it doesn't really work like that. But out of all the ramblings that I've said today, just know that you are loved, that you are appreciated, and that you are your career wasn't a waste. Your time and investment wasn't a waste. It had an impact on me. It's had an impact on all of us and we will continue to always love Destiny, play Destiny, buy Destiny games. Giving in to the rhetoric that it's doom and gloom and that's all we can do, I feel is a serious limitation of what the amount of creative talent that exists within the Destiny community is capable of. We can do way more than that. If we wanted to raise one billion, we could do it in this community, easy. I've seen the charity streams do it time and time again, raise money for the little lights. You know, if Destiny ends, what happens to the little lights? Like there are bigger ramifications here to just, even though layoffs are important, there are people who rely on what Destiny has been doing that has kept them going and has been a lifeline for many of us. So that's all I'm gonna say here. That's how I'm gonna end this video. I know it's not a typical video, but hopefully you found this a little bit hopeful, a little bit insightful, maybe some encouragement somewhere. And just know that I will continue to keep praying for you all as I do. Uh, and yeah, you're welcome here and stay safe. Godspeed.